of all patients in the first study that we now are in Tehran. Talking about uh, recent improvements uh, in dietary treatment of uh, PKU and challenges uh, of the GMP. What is GMP? Well, GMP stands for something called glycomacropeptide. It's, it's a protein. It's actually derived from milk protein, but it just happens to be low in phenylalanine. People may wonder, how can we have a low phenylalanine milk protein? Well, it's made during the cheese making process and when an enzyme is added to the milk to make the cheese, the phenylalanine part goes along with the curd to make the cheese and the GMP becomes part of the whey protein which is washed away and discarded. But this GMP in the whey protein just happens to be low in phenylalanine. So this was a real major, let's say, scientific discovery. It is a major discovery. We've actually known about GMP since 1965, so it's quite an old protein. And people started talking about using GMP back in the 1990s. But one of the drawbacks to GMP, it does contain a small amount of residual phenylalanine. It's impossible to get GMP for commercial use without phenylalanine completely. So back in the 1990s, it was considered too high in phenylalanine to use in PKU. So what are the risks in presenting this uh, to patients? What I haven't told you is what the benefits are, really. Right, okay, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. What so are the benefits? What, what are the benefits of, of taking GMP? Mm -hmm. GMP as a protein has got many, many benefits. Firstly, it tastes better. It's more of a complete protein. It's better utilised by the body. It's, it's, it's a good protein. It's a natural product. It's a natural product. It's associated with having a prebiotic effect. So it's better for healthy gut microbiota. That's thought to be good. It's thought to have an anti-inflammatory effect, a more gentle protein. And certainly it's been associated with better bones in, in PKU mice. Lots of potential advantages. But, there's always a but. What are the risks? The, the risks of GMP is that it contains this residual phenylalanine. And so for every gram of special protein that the GMP brings, it will bring one and a half milligrams of phenylalanine. So if we've got a patient taking 30 grams of protein equivalent per day, GMP will bring with it another 45 milligrams of phenylalanine. So what the potential risks are, it may potentially affect blood phenylalanine control or potentially a patient may need to take less phenylalanine in the diet to compensate for the phenylalanine in the GMP. And what is the, the latest um, knowledge about these hard decisions that you have to make? Most of the work so far has been conducted in the United States and most of the work has been done on adult patients, or certainly patients over the age of 11 years in PKU. And some very nice experiments have been done um, where patients have taken the GMP for a short length of time, they've maybe taken it over four days uh, or they've taken it over two weeks and compared it with our usual amino acid supplements that we have in PKU. And it, it's been shown to actually not affect blood phenylalanine control and they, 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 they've shown potential advantages in terms of filling the patients up better, having a better so-called satiety and, and certainly better protein re retention. So the work that is coming out from the United States says this is good. However, we've been doing a little bit of work in the UK and we've been working on GMP for the last two years and we've been working on much smaller children. And we've tried a couple of different formulations of GMP. One of the drawbacks I should have mentioned is that GMP is naturally low in phenylalanine, but it's also low in many other amino acids. So it's low in, importantly, in, in tyrosine, it's low in important amino acids like leucine and histidine, and children need these amino acids. So when you develop a GMP formula, it's not just pure GMP. We've got to add the additional tyrosine, the leucine, and many other amino acids into the GMP formula itself. 
Certainly when we started doing the work in Birmingham, we tried a formula which we tried to add the minimum extra amino acids to. This wasn't great because what we found when we put a, a, a small number of children onto this product, the phenylalanine concentrations increased. So the blood control was worse. We still managed to get, it, get the blood phenylalanine within target ranges, but certainly every single child had an increase. What we've done since then is we've reformulated the GMP. We've put more of these low amino acids that are naturally low in the GMP into the product. And in fact, we're starting to get better control in our patients with PKU. We're able to control blood at phenylalanine levels. Still, the one big drawback with young children is that we cannot completely replace the total amount of protein, the special protein, with this GMP without having some impact on control. But certainly it's much better, it tastes better, and it's very popular with our young children. You need more research to have this, let's say, finishing touch? We do need a lot more research. We're doing some randomized controlled trials. We're doing long-term bone work. We've been doing work on the nutritional status of children. It's good. Where we have no research work for is children now under the age of five years. And certainly if we start use, using it for babies or small children, we need to research it properly. We also have no data from pregnant ladies. And of course we need very good control during pregnancy. So we would be a little bit wary about giving the ladies a product with a little bit extra phenylalanine into, it may be more trickier to manage the, the blood phenylalanine control. You are very let's say, careful in uh, uh, choosing the right words about this GMP, of course. But would you support me when I say it is the future? I think it is the future. When we tried our very first formulation of GMP, which hadn't maybe got the right or the perfect amino acid profile, one of the things that our patients said to us, we was ready to say, should we stop the trial? Should we give up at this point? And every single family beyond doubt said, you must continue. You've got to sort that problem. We like this product better than the conventional amino acid product. So we knew we got to find a way around the small amount of phenylalanine that was in this product. And I think that's what we've been able to do. Thank you so much. Yeah.